It was a regular July morning in 2007 in Maimansing, Bangladesh, when suddenly the peace was shattered. A family of nine emerged from their home hand in hand and began a silent march towards the nearby train tracks. Baffled onlookers watched in disbelief as the family, grandparents, parents, and children alike calmly sat down on the rails, seemingly oblivious to the approaching train's blaring horn. The horrific scene unfolded in an instant, a deafening collision of metal and flesh, followed by a chilling silence. Commuters claimed to have heard the sounds of bones cracking upon the train's impact. The dust settled to reveal seven lifeless bodies, mangled beyond recognition. Amidst the carnage, a mother and child clung to life, their desperate cries for water piercing the air. In the wake of this tragic mass suicide, investigators uncovered a sinister trail of clues. A chilling sign adorned the gate of the family home that read, Adam's home. The creator of the universe is Adam's. Adam's is truth above all. The truth is his law. Time and human. None enter and touch anything. If anyone does, we must take revenge. Order by Adam's. They would realize this act was actually months in the making. It was driven by one man's bold claim that he was God, and the rest of his loyal family members willingly followed him into death. It's a chilling case that reminds me of the Barari family death shown in Netflix's House of Secrets. I do want to warn you, the story gets into sensitive topics like derogatory remarks made towards religions and religious figures, and also references to self-harm. Now, without further ado, let's lift the thin veil. The tragedy unfolded on the train tracks in the Kashar area of Maimensing district, Bangladesh, on the 11th of July 2007. Seven members of a family known as the Adam family were instantly killed. The remaining two, a mother named Akhtari and her young child Mala, were gravely injured. Though still alive and crying for water, Akhtari and Mala tragically passed away on the way to the hospital. The victims of this tragedy were Hena Anwar, her sons Arif and Rahat, daughters Akhtari, Murshida and Shabnam, and grandchildren Mala and Mao. Initially, the media claimed that another member of the family, Mobi Anwar, was part of the suicide, but based on what I read, she left the family before the 11th of July, and the ninth victim was actually the family's housemaid who went by Lena. What could lead a family with members from several different generations to commit such an act? Were they suffering from a shared delusion? The police and public were stunned by the tragic deaths, but also how publicly it happened. In Bangladesh, a conservative Muslim country, Maintaining family honor is very important to society, even after someone dies. The police found some strange details about this family. Seven years earlier, on that same fateful date, the family's patriarch, Anwar Darbesh, had died of a heart attack, leading the local community to believe that there was a connection. Things seemed to get more chilling as the police arrived at the Adam family house, which was only a few yards away from the place of the incident. Their home was surrounded by tall fencing and a large gate with the chilling sign mentioned earlier, warning against anyone entering. As police entered the modest six-room house, it appeared undisturbed, frozen in time, except for unsettling signs of what had been meticulously planned. In the kitchen, freshly cut vegetables and fish lay arranged on the counter next to an array of spices, as if awaiting someone to begin cooking a final meal. The police also found diaries that were written by different family members. These diaries were considered as the family's suicide notes, but some entries written as early as five months before the Adam family deaths. Some of the entries were in Bengali, while others were in broken English. I'll be reading some of the English entries as they were written wherever it's appropriate. We are the only family in the world who are independent and self-reliant, read one diary entry, believed to be written by son Rahat Anwar. Muhammad is exempt from all religious obligations and the law. Deeper inside, the furniture had been rearranged into chilling formations. A chair positioned squarely on the bed, multiple nooses suspended from the ceiling. It became clear the family had rehearsed this grisly ritual. Just as another passage from Arif's diary stated, So who we are? I have already given my and our identity as Adams. We have come to establish the truth and reality into the world, but our bodies were killed again and again by Muhammad's rules and religions. 
In the backyard, a grave had been excavated, its dimensions fit for the entire family. Nearby, candles and ceremonial items lay arranged, as if for some sort of profane seance. There were also coffins placed around the house, enough to contain the entire family. The area was eventually closed off and the house declared a crime scene, as hundreds of people flocked to try and get a view of the grave and coffins. There was speculation that the family had taken their own lives due to financial hardships, but some speculated it was partly due to their outlandish religion, simply called Adam's religion, and the belief that they would be reunited with their father and patriarch Anwar Darbesh, who they often refer to as Adam in their diaries. Anwar Darbesh, born Anwar Hussein, was a devout Muslim who left the Bangladeshi army in the late 1980s or early 1990s and settled in Maimen Singh in Bangladesh. He started holding a lot of religious events after serving in the military, which is when he picked up the monikers Darbesh, Fakir and Pir. These could be considered honorary titles due to the high level of respect his local community had for him. He was known as someone who people used to consider a spiritual healer and also a fortune teller. However, at some point in his life, for reasons unknown, his beliefs and actions started to diverge from traditional Islamic doctrine, and he would routinely argue about religion with both Muslims and followers of other faiths. Bangladesh is a predominantly Muslim society, but questioning the fundamentals of any Abrahamic faith in general is considered taboo, and he would face a lot of backlash for this. This led to him getting into many arguments, creating animosity with the rest of the community. In 1995, Darbesh had an incident where he got into a fight with a shop owner, where it ended up with him being attacked and driven out of the busy marketplace. This was humiliating for the family and a stain on their honor. Anwar's reputation as a religious and wise man in the community would slowly dwindle, and he would see less people approaching him for spiritual guidance over time. This amplified his growing hatred towards mainstream religion and led him to start his own belief system, and he began recruiting people, including his family members, this was around the time he changed his name from Anwar Hussein to Anwar Darbesh. His eldest son Mahin became utterly devoted to his father's new religion and they would spend hours in meditation together. Anyone who would not agree with this system would be driven away adding to the isolation of the family. Locals whispered that the Adam family trapped demons in bottles to curse those who crossed them, adding to the aura of fear surrounding their home. In Bangladesh, people within localities are close-knit and share similar beliefs. By separating themselves from this societal fabric and believing their own unconventional system, the Adam family likely faced significant isolation and stigma from their neighbors. Their isolation was not just a physical separation, but social and spiritual as well, and this likely contributed to the increased animosity they had towards others. Some people alleged that the Adam religion had roots in Christianity, but when police questioned members of the local Christian community, they claimed not to have seen the family, never heard of them, and had never seen the family attend any Christian ceremonies or church. In addition, no one had ever heard of Adam's house prior to the incident. The lead investigator of the case confirmed that the family did not adhere to a traditional religion, claiming they even worshipped the Hindu goddess Kali at one point. Their goal was to live a free life, free from mainstream religious rules, much like Adam and Eve lived in the beginning of time with Anwar Darbesh as a supreme being and absolute truth. The family's devotion to him was absolute, as shown by the youngest daughter Shabnam Anwar's writings, which expressed frustration at the world's inability to recognize his supposed divinity. She would write, Whatever you have heard about Adam and Eve, those are false. There was a first Adam, who created the whole universe. He is a god, the creator of all things. Every century he came. He is now in Bangladesh but everyone unable to recognize the valuable things. The name is Adam. The eldest daughter, Akhtari, further illuminated the depths of the Adam family's distorted belief system in her writings, referring to both the religion and her father as the absolute truth while rejecting all other faiths as lies. Her chilling devotion is evident in her own words. Adam is the lord of the world and the universe. This complete man is my father, Adam. All else is a lie. Anwar Darbesh would pass away from a heart attack in the 11th of July, 2000, but would leave very specific instructions for his burial. 
instructions which read as follows, After death, I will not perform any janaza, which is an Islamic ritual. I will not take a bath. I will not wear a shroud. I will be buried in the same condition which I will die. Don't take me to any cemetery. Dig a hole inside the house and bury me. I will have my head in the east, my feet in the west, and my face in the south. If you bury me in a different way, I will take vengeance. I wonder if Anwar Darbesh's descendants on the train tracks were the unfortunate recipients of this vengeance. This burial request clearly expressed defiance of the Islamic tradition. Turning one's feet westward is regarded as a show of disrespect towards a holy site in the Muslim religion. Anwar's family attempted to carry out these instructions, but were stopped by local authorities who buried Anwar Darbesh in the traditional Islamic manner. None of his family members would attend his funeral. After Anwar's death, his son Maheen became the head of the household, caring for the remaining family members in this story. They moved to Dhaka, which is the capital city of Bangladesh. But tragedy struck again when Maheen was assassinated in September 2005. It was at this time the rest of the family would return to Maimon Singh, where they were originally from. There isn't much information on this, but the family blamed the police for their inadequate investigation into Maheen's murder and vowed to seek revenge. As time passed, the family grew more isolated, spending their days sleeping and their nights chanting, summoning the spirits of their deceased relatives. Akhtari, the eldest daughter, would be used as a medium to communicate with her two dead relatives. As her diaries discussed her going through states of possession, Akhtari's tone would start sounding more like her father in her diary entries. On one instance, she wrote about a failed conversion of her late brother's girlfriend, but referring to herself as my daughter Akhtari. A failed convert or anyone who this family disliked would be referred to as an agent of Muhammad in reference to the main prophet in the Islamic religion. The Adam family believed that the prophet Muhammad was an evil trickster who had fooled people all over the world. They thought Muhammad had started all the major religions like Islam, Christianity and Hinduism as a way to mislead people and trap them into worshipping him instead of the real God. In their minds, mosques, churches and temples were part of Muhammad's plot to spread lies about God and religion. They even suspected their own neighbors of working secretly for Muhammad. The Adam family was convinced that Muhammad was able to control evil jinns, which are supernatural creatures in Islamic mythology, to hurt them through black magic and curses. They felt they were being constantly attacked and tortured, both physically by their neighbors and spiritually by Muhammad's jinns. In a diary entry by Shabnam, she wrote about the agents of Muhammad coming into their house and stealing and destroying a bunch of fixtures and cutting down trees, a claim that was later disputed by neighbors. There are reports of neighbors harassing the family and giving them a hard time, but equally, there are also reports about the family showing violence towards the neighbors whom they considered agents of Muhammad set out to destroy them. The Adam family saw their leader Anwar Darbesh as the one true voice of God. They believed it was their mission to destroy Muhammad's web of lies about religion that had spread across the world through churches, temples and mosques. Even the youngest two, Mala and Mao, both had matching entries that read, I am also declaring that by my departure, Muhammad's all existence, religions and worship places will finish forever. Ending their own lives was their way of striking back against Muhammad once and for all. They thought by taking their own lives, they would finally defeat Muhammad's evil plan and eliminate all religions started by him from the world forever. So in their minds, suicide was a heroic act of rebellion against the massive conspiracy led by Muhammad to trick humanity through false religions. Our last resort is go and finish them all. We never imagined that we have to stay without them. Just one wish that go to my father and brother take revenge on Muhammad, wrote the youngest daughter, Sharmin. And with this steadfast belief in mind, in July 2007, the Adam family would lead themselves to the train tracks ready to meet Anwar Darbesh. The Adam family had been planning their deaths for months. Their diary entries were dated far back, some even five months earlier. This shows they had made deliberate plans well in advance. It was not a desperate cry for help, but a calculated action against what they believed were oppressive religious and social forces. 
After their deaths, the state of their home revealed how consumed they had become by their extreme beliefs. The furniture rearrangements, nooses, grave dug in the yard and ceremonial items showed they had created their own separated world where reality and delusions blurred together. In the end, the Adam family's twisted beliefs grew from feeling persecuted and formed into a perceived conspiracy against them. This ultimately led them down a path of horrific mass violence that shattered the peace in their village. If you like this video, then make sure you like and subscribe. Check the description box to see how you can support the channel. Until next time.